The Sisterling Institute conducted an investigation into the current state of the art related to floating breakwaters and wave energy generators. The research aimed at providing a preliminary engineering assessment of the size, effectiveness and applicability to deployment of the potential breakwater and energy devices in the open ocean at a scale consistent with a floating megacity scenario. So first of all, why wave energy? Obviously, to harness the energy within the waves to produce electricity for the seasteads. Ocean waves are also a clean and renewable energy source. The waves in the open ocean sea have a great energy potential, and the capture of this energy source has a negligible impact on the environment. How much energy from the waves? This map shows an estimation of the available wave energy around the world. Each number corresponds to the available wave power potential measured in kilowatt per meter. The largest wave energy potentials appear around both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans between 30 degree and 60 degree latitude. This map represents the U.S. offshore wave energy resource. As it can be seen, the total U.S. resource turns around 2.1 terawatt per year, with the southern Alaska accounting for more than half of it. Now a little bit on the devices used to harness the wave's energy. Wave energy converters. A very large number of concepts exist for such systems. Over 1,000 wave energy conversion techniques have been patented in Japan, North America and Europe. Wave energy are generally categorized by type, operating principle and location. Types of wave energy converters. The first type, the attenuator, lies parallel to the predominant wave direction and rides the waves. The differing heights of waves along the length of the device cause a flexing motion where the segments connect. This flexion of the segments then power hydraulic pumps or other converters. An example of a converter of the attenuator type is the Pelamis, developed by the Scottish company Ocean Power Delivery. The Pelamis is a huge sea snake installed at the water surface. It generates power through the hinge joint that connect its cylindrical tube sections. Another type of wave energy converter is the point absorber. It consists of a floating structure absorbing energy in all directions through its vertical motion near the water surface. The power takeoff system may take a number of forms depending on the configuration. The power buoy developed by Ocean Power Technology is a good example of point absorber devices. The rising and falling of the waves offshore causes the buoy to move freely up and down. The resultant mechanical stroking is then converted via a sophisticated power takeoff to drive an electrical generator. Now let's move on to the operating principle of these wave energy converters. The submerged pressure differential device is a submerged point absorber that uses the pressure difference above the device between wave crests and troughs. The alternating pressure can then pump fluid through a system to generate electricity. These devices are typically located near shore or attached to the seabed. The CETO wave power converter was the first unit to be fully submerged and to produce high pressure water from the power of waves. The oscillating wave surge device is a near surface collector mounted on a pivoted joint close to the seabed. The arm oscillates as an inverted pendulum in response to the orbital forces of the waves. The aquamarine power oyster is also a near-shore device, where the top of the deflector, placed above the water surface, is hinged from the seabed. The oscillating water column is a partly submerged structure with an opening to the sea below the waterline. Waves cause the water column to rise and fall, which alternately compresses and depressurizes the air column. The air then flows through a turbine driving an electrical generator. These are examples of OWCs as point absorber, as well as being built into the shoreline where it acts as a terminator. An example of a shoreline mounted device is the wave chain limpet. The overtopping device relies on the physical capture of seawater from the incident waves in the reservoir above the water surface. That water is then released back to the sea through turbines, hence producing electricity. An example of such a device is the Wave Dragon. 
It uses a pair of large curved reflectors to gather waves into the central receiving part. Waves slow up a ramp and into a raised reservoir from which the water returns to the sea via a number of low head turbines. Various possible locations for the installation of those wave energy converters have been listed. Wave energy converters were initially developed on the shoreline and are defined as first generation devices. These are easy to maintain and less likely to be damaged in extreme conditions. This leads to one of the disadvantages of shore mounted devices as shallow water leads to, to lower wave power. Later on, Nearshore or seabed anchored second generation devices appeared. Nearshore devices were designed for relatively shallow water. Using concepts from first and second generation devices, offshore wave energy converters were also developed. Offshore systems are generally installed in deep water and can harvest greater amounts of energy thanks to the higher energy content in deep water waves. Wave energy is generally considered to provide a clean source of renewable energy with limited negative environmental impacts. Sea waves have a high energy densities, the highest among renewable energy resources. It could become a significant source of energy not involving CO2 emissions. The natural seasonal variability of wave energy follows the electricity demand in temperate climates. The main wave energy barriers result from the energy carry itself, the sea. The peak to average load ratio in the sea is very high and difficult to predict. The structural loading in the event of extreme weather conditions, such as hurricanes, may be as high as 100 times the average loading. High construction costs induce high power generation costs, thus making the technology uncompetitive. Now, moving on to breakwater. Breakwater are structures of various sizes and shapes installed in the seas to reduce or even cancel the wave's action. A large range of fixed and floating breakwater systems have been developed over the years in the aim to protect coastal areas and harbors from wave attacks. These structures were primarily designed to resist or absorb waves' energy in relatively shallow water and mild environmental conditions. With the sea stating concept, Independent and quasi-autonomous communities may only establish themselves out of the EEZ of any country. Hence, the need to build a future seasteads in the middle of the oceans, in deep seas where waves, periods and energies are usually much larger than those close to the shores. New types of effective breakwater devices adapted for offshore application needs to be developed in order to create zones of calm water and in parallel harness the tremendous wave energy to generate power. Since no such device has yet been tested and approved at large scales, the work presented highlights some of the major flowing breakwater systems that have been patented over the last few decades. Two main types of breakwater exist. One of the main factors which determines the type of breakwater to be used in a particular location is the water depth. The scientific definition of water depth depends on the wavelength, which is the distance between two successive waves. At water depth larger than half the wavelength, we use the term deep water. When the water depth is smaller than half the wavelength, we consider shallow water. Fixed breakwaters are mounted on the seabed in shallow water. They usually consist of large rocks or concrete rocks piled up on the top of each other to stop the incoming waves and protect areas close to the shore, like harbors or beaches, as shown on the picture. This type of breakwater, however, only exists for shallow water application. Obviously, it would be far too expensive and complex to build these fixed structures in 5,000 feet of water 100 miles away from the shore. Then, the second main type of breakwater is the floating one. This breakwater can be moored far from the coast or in areas with poor seabed foundation. Their installation is far more complex than fixed breakwaters and they can require a lot of maintenance. Plus, the resistance and efficiency in heavy sea states often remains questionable. However, for the seasteading project, floating breakwaters are the type to be used since ocean communities may only establish themselves more than 24 miles away from any country's shore. So, a bit more about breakwater. 
The main function is to absorb and dissipate the energy of oncoming waves. By doing so, they create areas of calm water and also help in reducing coastal erosion along the shore. In general, breakwaters, especially the floating ones, are subject to very high wave impacts and currents. The design and construction of such structures are of great importance. Failure of breakwaters can result in catastrophic consequences, especially during storms, hence the need to carefully assess the main design factors. Some of these main design factors were listed here. All are more or less interdependent with each other. For instance, the breakwater structural integrity and wave transmission performance depend on the breakwater geometry, mass and mooring properties. Similarly, the mooring forces also depend on the breakwater geometry and mass. Regarding the location of the floating breakwater, it is probably the principal design factor. By knowing the exact location point, the environmental conditions and wave statistics data of the place may be found. Hence, the pressure distribution on the flowing breakwater could be estimated, as well as the mooring forces to design the body of the structure. For any assisted scenario, the breakwaters must be floating, efficient, resistant, and compatible with the installation of wave energy generators. Basic flooring systems. Unlike fish breakwater, flooring breakwater can be installed both closed or far from the shore. Their design, installation, and maintenance involves a lot of complex parameters interlinked with each other. The breakwater should be designed taking into account that up to 90% of the wave energy is located between the water surface and a quarter of the wavelength below it. The breakwater is most effective when the natural period of oscillation is longer than the wave period and the width equivalent to half the wavelength. It is also most effective with waves of short length. As a general rule, the wider it is, the better it should respond to long waves. When hit by waves, the motion response of the breakwater creates a sort of anti-wave, reducing the total energy of the incoming waves. The breakwater, in this case, has the same function as the bulbous bow of large marine vessels. In the same way, as the ship moves forward, the resistance of the bow through the water creates waves opposite to the encountered ones, hence reducing the total frictional resistance along the hull of the ship. On the picture, the green line represents the incoming wave, the blue line the wave created by the bulb, and the straight dark line along the hull, the resultant wave, which is flat. The figure presents a short list of the main types of existing flooring breakwaters. A Dutch engineering company called FDN has developed over the years with the collaboration of many research institutes and Delft University some efficient and cost-effective breakwater systems. They are made of fixed-shape models allowing for assembly of breakwaters of any configuration and length in theory. Each type is specifically suited for a particular wave and weather conditions. The simplest and most widely used breakwater is the box type. It consists of reinforced concrete modules which may be filled with different core materials. Improved box type breakwaters have also been conceived to further ameliorate the efficiency of the original designs. The extra viscosity resistance caused by the extra underwater structure reduces the motion of the apparatus. Modules breakwater. Those are composed of a plurality of modules all mounted together to reduce the overall energy of the waves hitting the whole assembly. The modules may be filled with air, sand or concrete to adjust the total weight of the structure. The main disadvantage of the concept is that wave energy generators may be fairly complex to install due to the high flexibility of the breakwater. However, these devices have been fairly successful for shallow water applications. The double breakwater consists of two different floating apparatus, each being specifically tuned to cancel a range of waves of a particular wavelength. Basically, ocean waves are normally composed of both high and low frequency waves. So the first breakwater is tuned to cancel the high frequency waves, while the second one cancels the low frequency waves, hence creating a 
an area of calm water behind the two devices. By combining these two or eventually three brick wires all together, a greater range of waves may be attenuated. The mass of each brick wire may be adjustable thanks to dynamic control systems by either emptying or filling ballast tanks within these structures. By doing so, the response of the brake wire may be optimized depending on the wave's condition for a better efficiency. In terms of energy production, ballast water flows through hydro turbines as the structure heaves and pitch. The turbines are connected to generators, hence creating electricity. In the same fashion as a real pitch, this type of brake wire slowly reduces the incoming wave's energy as these move onto the slope. The structure must be deep and long enough to stop the strong orbital velocities of the waves and be sufficiently high above the water level to avoid overtopping problems. Various types of wave energy generators may be installed on this breakwater. The beach breakwater is one of the most attractive concepts for deep water applications. Advantages Floating breakwater presents some undeniable advantages on many aspects. They can protect areas from wave attack. There is also a general flexibility in the arrangement of the structure. Possible integration of wave energy generators. A minimum interference with water circulation and marine species migration. And helps controlling erosion in coastal application. However, the use of such devices also involves certain disadvantages, which are an unknown efficiency for deep water application, a big lake of research and data on deep water floating brick waters, and the complexity of the design, manufacture, and installation, as well as the cost of such structures. Alternative concepts of brick water. This interesting concept, first patented in 1926, uses a compressor linked to perforated pipes in order to discharge blasts of air from underneath the water surface. Regarding the specific pressure and time intervals between the discharge, those may be controllable to offer better efficiency depending on the states of the waves to be dissipated. Basically, by being thermodynamically compressed and expanded, the bubbles thereby convert the kinetic energy of the water into thermal energy to dissipate the energy of the waves. One of the main disadvantages of this concept is that wave energy generator may not be integrated with the wave damping system. Those would have to be installed as parallel systems. Otherwise, more research needs to be done to accurately estimate the practical efficiency of such a system, especially for deep water applications. The following slides present some of the most promising concepts, which could combine both floating breakwater and wave energy generator devices. This selection was mostly based on the efficiency and environmental resistance of the apparatus as a whole in deep seas. Even though some systems may seem attractive at first, their installation, operation, maintenance may simply be too complex in more than 1,000 feet of water, where potential cysts could be developed. As a result, the concepts chosen correspond to hybrid systems using shapes and IDs taken from various existing devices or projects. Regarding the energy production, a large range of options including wind, solar, wave and tidals are available. With the current technologies, most of these types of energy generators may be adapted to box or T-shaped breakwaters. As a result, various combinations of energy generators and flowing breakwaters may be feasible. The first concept is the offshore ocean energy system. It exploits renewable resources of the oceans within the same structure and also integrates a pneumatically stabilized platform. The many advantages of the pneumatically stabilized platform are its large flexible deck with a high loading capacity. It is easily reconfigurable and also has a long life with minimal hull maintenance and no out-of-service time, what would be ideal for a system. The platform supports and deploys wind, wave, energy, harvesting subsystems in a stable and accessible manner. Offshore wave energy would be harvested by the Rose Sea, 
the wave energy converter system integrated within the pneumatically stabilized platform. An assembly of the structure could be done as presented. The first and second platform length would be 1,500 meter and 300 meter respectively. A good location for assisted community would be in a moderate weather environment, assuming that the wave energy power hardness by the Rossi would range between 25 and 30 kilowatt per meter of wavelength. A seastead of 2 kilometer diameter, therefore having a circumference of 6.3 kilometer, could annually produce 195 megawatt on average. There would be five wind turbines of 2 megawatt each in every platform of the first type and two wind turbines of 2 megawatt each as well on the platform of the second type. This would offer an output power of 84 megawatt from wind energy. Therefore, the OOES could have a maximum output energy of 255 megawatt combining wave and wind energies. To put that into perspective, one megawatt can power 1,000 homes of four members each in a developed country. Therefore, by producing 243 megawatt, sufficient power could be provided for about 972,000 people. The SSG is a wave energy converter that can be integrated in a breakwater construction. This will be a cost-effective wave converter utilizing the foundation of the breakwater. The WEC is based on the wave overtopping principle utilizing a toll of three reservoirs or more placed on the top of each other in which the potential energy of the oncoming wave would be stored. The water captured in the reservoir will then run through the multi-stage turbine using multiple reservoirs would result in a high overall efficiency. The SSG may be built as a robust concrete structure with the turbine shaft and the gas controlling the water flow. The structure should have the shape of an artificial pitch with the SSG system on the top part. The T-shaped breakwater. The T-shaped breakwater is constructed in such a way that densities of the platform decrease from the platform beam to the keel member. This density variation aims at lowering the center of gravity of the device to the junction of the keel member and the vertical beam. This contraction offers more stability to the keel member, which should remain motionless when hit by waves. The heaven pitch motion of the device damps the incoming waves to reduce or eliminate them on the other side of the breakwater. For what concerns the integration of energy generators and the structure, wind, solar and wave system may be installed. Hinge control devices could be installed on the extremity of the horizontal beam. The device would draw energy from wave power with flows that rise and fall with the up and down motion of the waves. The motion of the flows, then transferred via hydraulics into the rotation of generator, produces electricity. In addition to that, both solar panels and wind turbines could be installed on top of the T, giving the whole apparatus a large energy production capacity. The exit float. It has an ability to produce large amounts of energy, whatever the weather conditions are. Different renewable groups have been combined in a single structure to harness all types of energy sources available in the ocean wind, wave, solar, and tidal. Multiple lines of exit flows may be combined together in order to enlarge the whole apparatus to further reduce the wave attacks and produce more energy. However, due to the low draft of the structure, such a concept may not sufficiently damp long ocean waves with deep or vital velocities. It may be necessary to redesign the underwater structure by adding screens or large compartments with ballast tanks. Otherwise, lines of horizontal exit floats could also be combined with a simple shaped breakwater. Hence, both an efficient wave damping and energy production system could be installed to provide some of the main requirements needed for the good evolution of seasteads, energy, calm water, and safety. The Draco. It is a newly developed wave energy converter 
which also act as a floating breakwater. The system was designed to absorb, concentrate and transform wave energy into electrical power while reducing the incoming ocean wave's energy. The machine is based on the latest iteration of wave energy converter, making it more efficient than any other existing device of the type. It was designed to capture both the kinetic and potential energy of the swell, driving hydro turbines to generate electrical power. Its resistance to heavy sea state and great capacity to harness the wave's energy make the Draco one of the most promising concepts so far studied. In conclusion, flowing breakwaters do not yet exist for deep water application. More research on the final location of the first seastead would allow for a better estimate of the conditions the device should be designed for. More research on the design aspect and hydrodynamic response of this structure is also necessary. Many tests would significantly help improving research in those fields. Tank and scale prototype tests would allow for practical checks of the theoretical calculation. An optimization test with adjustable ballast tanks to experiment the use of dynamic control systems and such apparatus would also be necessary. Overall, protecting metropolis states from wave attack constitutes one of the most fundamental objectives to allow for the safe development of offshore communities during critical environmental conditions. A lot of research needs to be done to develop efficient breakwaters or other systems to absorb and convert the tremendous wave energy all around the floating city in heavy sea states. The attenuation of large ocean waves and the cost involved with such a project represent serious engineering and economical challenges.